Welcome back to Canto Sense, where we are embracing Chinese culture for Christian living. We're here to navigate together through the nuances and tensions so that we can live fully Christian and fully Chinese. Last episode, we talked about tiger moms when we celebrated Mother's Day. And so given how concerned and focused our parents are on our education and vocation, we've entitled today's episode, Lawyers, Doctors, and Accountants, Oh My. But don't worry, we haven't forgotten that engineers are also a favorite choice by Chinese parents. I mean, when I was growing up, even in Canada, uh, there was a running joke that to get any of these jobs, you'd have to take what we call the Chinese six pack. And the six pack being biology, chemistry, physics, calculus, algebra, statistics. And you take all these six classes, you can apply to university and hopefully become one of those professions. But how did these stereotypes even come to be? I mean, all jokes aside. It's interesting that you talk about the Chinese six pack because I think similarly, you know, in this part of the world, uh, Chinese people are seen to be really good in math and, and science, you know, because those are very much related to the careers in medicine, in engineering, and in accountancy. I, I think, you know, the whole stereotype, it comes from a couple of different values that are very important and significant for Chinese people. One is the whole honor shame, you know, it's the face, the minzi, you know, because it comes with a title. So like, for example, Dr. Chan, you know, so there's something that you're proud of. Again, Chinese people, very pragmatic, you know, in just thinking about the future, thinking about your life. You don't want to be a struggling artist. I mean, unless you're exceptionally good, unless you're Picasso, you know, uh, then maybe, but otherwise there's no guarantee you'll make a living. There's no guarantee people will buy your art. Uh, where else, if you're a doctor, people are bound to get sick. You know, you're an engineer, people will always want to build houses and bridges. Uh, so there's a sense of financial security and stability. So you don't have to worry too much. You know, it's in a way, it's kid fun. You, you, once you get that job, you're kind of assured of a good future, right? And of course, all leads to the idea of prosperity, which we often bring up, which obviously from the biblical worldview doesn't guarantee true prosperity. But That's right. for a lot of Chinese parents, financial stability and all that would somehow bring prosperity into your life. So when we think about all these different careers that our parents want us to take up, it's really undergirded by some of these mm. values that they hold very close to them. Yeah, And that's these values is how they would define the good life, right? When kids don't choose any of those career paths, parents are very concerned. If you're going to go into the arts, you got to be a prodigy. Or even in athletics, there is a great concern there. I mean, even Jeremy Lin, the NBA basketball player, he has a Harvard degree in economics so that there's still a skill to fall back on that's very pragmatic, practical, and stable. Yeah, absolutely. On a certain level, parents seem to see their children when, when they're adults as some sort of an investment for their old age. And not in a mercenary way, but this is again related to this whole idea of filial piety that is somehow assumed and inherent is almost like, of course, my, my children will support me, you know, when yeah. I'm old. And of course, they will only be able to support me if they have a stable income or a good job. And the better job they have, the yeah. well, better I'll be taken care of. It is this whole idea of filial piety that is assumed, that is somehow inherent in, in the way we, we think. I, for example, always just assume that it's the right or normal thing to do to support your parents financially. And I remember when I uh, first heard the calling from God to go into Christian work, uh, one of the first concerns that came to my mind was, how will I support my parents now? Mm, right. Because I was going to give up my you know, cushy job at that time and go into full-time Christian work. And that means I will get paid or not, you know, depending yeah. on how much support comes in. Right. And that was a real concern for me. So you have Chinese parents. I mean, what did they say when you decided to go into missions, which is not being a painter or an artist, but going into Christian ministry is probably 
pretty close to the equivalent. I remember this vividly. I was with my mom and at that time she hadn't been a believer for too long. I said, this is what the Lord has called me to do. I'm moving to uh, another country to be a missionary. Mm -hmm. And I want to just let you know and sort of, you know, indirectly ask her permission with tears in her eyes. You know, she said, as your mother, of course, I would not want to see you go because you're going to this place, you know, God knows where and how. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I also recognize that I am uh, your sister in Christ and I should encourage you mm. if you are being obedient to the Lord mm. and she said and you belong to Jesus you don't belong to me so so when we said that you know I, I, I realized that that's kind of settled and we prayed but I think all this to say really as parents um, often we think subconsciously that we own our children but we don't because we're, we're merely stewards of our children. You know, God has given them as gifts into our lives for a season so that we can minister to them. We take care of their needs. We guide them in the way of the Lord. And the time will come where we fully have to let go uh, and give our children back to the Lord. And that is why I think it's important for us to recognize as parents that our children have to first be obedient to what God wants them to do. So it's not our way, but God's way. And it's not our children's way either, but it's God's way because their lives belong to God as well. Our children are not our retirement providence. On one hand, it's wonderful to think that my son would be there for me, but we cannot rely on that because the person that we should rely on for our providence for all that we need is God. Of course, we have to be careful in terms of saving for retirement and all that, but ultimately it is God who will provide for us, not our children. With the generation that we see coming into the workforce, there's now a wider variety than ever of different occupations and career paths that you can take and even switching careers midway through. And I mean, we're just spoiled for choice to be perfectly you are. honest. Yeah. While parents should respect where God has called us to use our gifting as kids, I think kids also need to take a responsibility in their career pursuits. But we can't do that in isolation without thinking of how we're going to keep honoring our family. That whether you have chosen a conventional Chinese vocation or not, there are still ways to be filial towards your family. And Absolutely. regardless of what you choose, ultimately you're accountable to God for that choice. What we hope not to see is to have 40 year olds moving back in with their parents when they're broke and are living off their parents' retirement fund because they haven't been prudent and wise. And there is a balance that can be struck between the Chinese expectations yeah. in that culture and also what God has called you to do. We thank you for joining us today. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on social media, tell us your Canto sense. What occupation have you chosen and what was your parents' reaction to that? We'd love to hear from you. Do tune in next time when we talk about frugality. We're finally going to uncover the mystery of house clothes, okay, Sam, and also why people take all the toiletries from hotel rooms. See you again next time. Bye.